In October of 2001, a powerful Category 4 hurricane hit southern Belize. For a tiny country in Central America, this storm wasn't likely to make global headlines. But for Belizeans, Hurricane Iris was devastating. 15,000 people were left homeless, flooding contaminated drinking water, and the 145 mile per hour winds uprooted power lines, leading to large-scale blackouts. The storm caused over $250 million in damages, one of the most destructive in Belize's history. Most devastating of all, though, the storm killed 24 people in Belize, 20 of whom were on a capsized scuba diving boat. The wave dancer carried members of a Richmond, Virginia dive club who had come to see one of Belize's most beautiful natural wonders, its barrier reef. That same barrier reef would be yet another casualty of Hurricane Iris. The storm completely uprooted large swaths of Belize's coral reefs, one of the longest and most biodiverse anywhere in the world. The destruction made reef restoration that much more difficult since there was no physical structure from which to build off of. Throw in the fact that reefs around the world are under threat, and things weren't looking great for restoring Belize's reefs. But they gave it a shot, and it's working. This is that story. The story of how Belize is bringing its corals back to life. To start, we're not actually heading to Belize just yet. We need to talk about barrier reefs more generally. Now, you might not know this, but corals are actually animals. They're part of a group of marine invertebrates called cnidarians, which also includes jellyfish and sea anemones. They're a bit different from other animals though. They don't look like them and they certainly don't move around like them. Instead, most corals are sedentary colonial animals made up of thousands of individual polyps. For the purposes of this video, we're mainly going to be talking about stony corals, which secrete calcium carbonate that builds up over time and forms what we know as reefs. They're one of the most important marine ecosystems we know of. By some estimates, up to 25% of all marine species can be found in reefs. That is an incredible statistic for an ecosystem that only covers 0.1% of Earth's entire ocean area. For this reason, they've been called rainforests of the sea. You can find thousands of species of fish, rays, corals, crabs, lobsters, sharks, octopuses, manatees, and so much more. There's simply an astonishing array of life here. And the corals are, quite literally, the building blocks for all of it. They make up the actual physical structure of the reef, providing habitat, food, and shelter for thousands of those aforementioned species thanks to the calcium carbonate skeletons they secrete. Each little nook and cranny is somewhere a fish can hide from a predator, or raise its young, or just rest if it's tired. The staggering biodiversity on offer here is enough to justify their protection, but in case you need a little more convincing, here are just a few more facts and figures about reefs. An estimated 6 million fishermen rely on reefs for their livelihoods. A total of 500 million rely on them not only for income, but for food and protection as well. The economic value of the world's reefs is estimated to be in the tens of billions of dollars. They're on the forefront of medical research and provide protection from severe weather since they help dissipate powerful waves and storm surges. So it's pretty clear that reefs are important vitally important to humans and marine life alike, but they're also severely threatened. A multitude of factors are combining to put coral reefs at complete risk of extinction. To start off with, ocean acidification, pollution, and rising temperatures are tearing away at a vital link in the coral life cycle. See, what gives corals their vibrant diversity of colors and appearances isn't actually the corals themselves. It's a type of algae called zooxanthellae, which they have a symbiotic relationship with. Their relationship works like this. Corals provide a home for the algae, and through their waste products, supply the algae with the nutrients they need to photosynthesize. In return, the algae provide the corals with oxygen, remove their waste products, and supply the corals with the nutrients they need to grow. They're basically the world's greatest roommates. The algae take out the trash and cook dinner, and the corals pay the rent and put a roof over everyone's head. A pretty good arrangement. Except those factors we talked about, acidification, pollution, rising temperature, they put a serious strain on this relationship. If conditions get too harsh, corals will actually expel their algal friends, kicking them out of the apartment entirely. When this happens, the translucent coral tissue means that all you can see is the ghostly white skeleton underneath. You may have heard about this phenomenon. It's called bleaching, and if conditions don't improve and the algae don't return, the corals are likely to die. They need those algae to survive. 
The Caribbean alone has lost 80% of its coral reefs in the last few decades. And if that weren't bad enough, corals are also under threat from unchecked shoreline development, especially mangrove removal, and a mysterious new illness called stony coral tissue loss disease. But there is another threat, one that is far more destructive, albeit less frequent. This is where we return to Belize and Hurricane Iris. On that October day in 2001, Iris's destruction wasn't limited to land. Its power completely uprooted and destroyed large amounts of coral in Belize's Barrier Reef Reserve System. That system is part of the larger Mesoamerican Barrier Reef System, which stretches over 500 miles from Mexico to Honduras, the second longest in the world after the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. It's one of the most pristine barrier reefs in the world, and Charles Darwin once remarked that it was, quote, the most remarkable reef in the West Indies. In Belize, a system of seven different protected areas comprise 12% of the reef's area and cover some 370 square miles. One of these protected areas, Laughing Bird Cay National Park, was particularly hard hit by Hurricane Iris. Prior to the storm, corals covered somewhere between 15 and 28% of the park's area. But after it, that number dropped to less than 6%. The reason Hurricane Iris was so devastating to these reefs is, unlike a bleaching event, corals can't really recover from being completely uprooted. There's simply nothing to recover. With a bleaching event, if conditions improve, however unlikely that may be, the algae can return and corals can start to heal. But with something like this, corals would have to start from scratch on a process that can take thousands of years to fully form. Of course, we could always give them a little nudge in the right direction. And that's exactly what Lisa Karn, a marine biologist based in Belize, did. Her organization, Fragments of Hope, basically kickstarts coral reef formation by transplanting young corals onto pre-made structures like rebar grits. And when they're ready for the big leagues, she transfers them over to the actual reef. She makes sure to place them close enough together so that they might cross-fertilize each other increasing their overall genetic diversity and resilience. In the face of climate change, Karn also uses more stress-tolerant corals to increase the odds of survival even further. But what started as a small research project has now exploded into a full-blown grassroots movement, and has even resulted in new protections from the Belizean government. Up to 50% of Belizeans rely on the reef for fishing or tourism income. So when it was damaged in Hurricane Iris, it was no coincidence that they jumped at the opportunity to try and save it. In a 2012 referendum, 96% of Belizeans voted to protect and help restore the reef. 70 Belizeans are now certified in coral restoration thanks to a training course developed by Fragments of Hope. Restoration jobs are yet another way local Belizeans are benefiting from their reef. To date, locals have helped to replant 85,000 corals in Belize. 89% of them have survived more than 14 years, and coral cover in Laughing Bird Cay has risen from 6% of its area to over 50%. Belize as a whole has increased its coral cover as well, from around 11% of the seafloor in 2006 to around 17% now. On the government side of things, in 2016 they adopted a comprehensive management plan for the Barrier Reef Reserve System. And in 2017, they announced an unprecedented ban on all offshore oil exploration in Belize's territorial waters. They've also pledged to increase protections for Belize's coastal mangroves and more closely regulate onshore development. The restoration and subsequent government action actually prompted UNESCO to remove the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System from its list of World Heritage Sites in Danger in 2018, a clear indication of the reef's ongoing recovery. Now, I'd be lying to you if I said everything was looking rosy for Belize's barrier reefs. It's not. They're facing the same threats reefs around the world are. Bleaching, disease, shoreline development, hurricanes. Belize is even building new ports for cruise ships, further threatening these incredible ecosystems. But when I look at this restoration and how one woman fighting to protect a place she loved blossomed into a nationwide conservation movement, that gives me hope. It would have been easy to say that Hurricane Iris was just a natural occurrence and left it at that, but they didn't. In a world where coral reefs are disappearing at an alarming rate, Belize stepped up to the plate and went to bat for them. These reefs are as much a part of their culture and identity as they are of their environment and economy. It won't be easy to keep protecting them, but with these restoration efforts, hopefully they at least stand a chance. 
If you want to learn more about the world's protected places, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me bring more park stories to more people. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.